There was gunfire in the forest, deafening in the dead silence of a still night. Smoke rose beyond the lush canopy, a wildfire of lead and gunpowder ignited, tearing through untouched evergreen. One sonic boom after another tore through the air, lodging bullets in the proud maritime pine. Heavy footsteps thundered on the leaf and root-covered ground, accompanied by the sound of barking dogs, broken branches, and uprooted shrubbery. Find that fucking thief! A group of men, dressed in all black and armed to the teeth, poured between the tall trees in droves, flashlights sweeping the dense shadows. Over there! shouted one, his flashlight pointing towards a hollow tree. The beam of blinding light illuminated a hooded figure curled into the bark, trying desperately to conceal themselves. They jolted, as if burned by the light itself, wrapping their arms around to clutch something underneath their grey jacket. A glint of gemstone sparkled through the opening of said jacket, set upon a leather surface, dirty jeans and muddy shoes. The figure took off in a mad dash, tearing deeper into the thicket. The bullets barely missed them as they tore through the wood behind them. The horde charged after them, but their smaller, lither figure moved deathly through the winding path and hazardous terrain in an adrenaline-filled frenzy. Vaulting over boulders and fallen trees, descending into ravines and clambering up steep inclines, changing directions rapidly in a desperate attempt to throw the aim of their pursuers. Don't let him get away! Kill him if you have to! Hollered the commander, an older gentleman with a graying beard, his red cap and captain's armband signifying his status. The army of men picked up their pace in full pursuit, pushing through the mud and biting cold. But the ground gave way with every step, slick with evening frost and laden with tree roots. Their heavy equipment dragged them down, made them sink into the slurry and clung to their boots. Ugh, fuck! We won't catch up to him at this rate! They were losing sight of the figure through the tree line, but failure was not an option. If they lost that damn artifact, then their lives could very well be next. The boss was many things, but Merciful was not one of them. The commander grit his teeth. Send the dogs! Yes, sir! The animal handlers unclipped the leashes from their dogs' collars, letting them charge ahead at full speed. Go get em, boys! Five, six dogs bolted ahead, quickly disappearing in the underbrush. The figure barreled ahead, not thinking, not looking back, just moving. Every single instinct in their body screamed at them to keep running, to keep moving forward until they could no longer hear the shouts or gunshots, until the light could no longer reach or find them. Until they were safe. That was when they stopped. But for now, even as their muscles screamed for them to stop, even as their chest ached from how hard their heart was pounding, they had to keep going. Bullets whizzed past their head, their arms, their legs. They could feel the shock waves as the bullets traveled past and it never failed to make their heart stop in their chest, wondering if they'd been hit. How they hadn't been hit yet was completely beyond them. Or perhaps they were already gushing blood and the adrenaline pumping through their system had numbed them from it. But just as the shouting and footsteps seemed to relent, just as they thought they were through the thick of it, the silence that ensued brought a chill up their spine. It had suddenly become too quiet. Something was wrong. Horribly wrong. Their steps slowed from a sprint to a run, and slower still until they fell into a light jog. Face obscured by the overcast of their hood, they snapped their head back and forth to quickly take in their surroundings. They were gasping for breath. Sweat coated their muddy body from head to toe, and their heart pounded so loudly in their ears that they could barely hear anything else. The flashlight beams were still moving around erratically behind them, indicating chase yet further away than they had been before. But something felt off. There was a lull, a pause, like the calm before a storm, tension building like a cord ready to snap. They were putting distance between themselves and their pursuers, yet they felt no more assured than when they were being shot at. They threw themselves into the undergrowth, pulling leaves, branches, bramble, and mud over their body in a desperate attempt to conceal themselves. Should they run? Stay hidden? Was there a trap ahead? What were they planning behind them? Were they jeopardizing themselves by pausing? Their hands clutched at the item and set their jacket once more, their minds spinning, struggling to come to a decision as panic set in. 
Their gasping breaths grew shallower than it had been before, their chest now aching from tightness. This didn't feel real. This had to be a nightmare. And then, they heard it. The snapping of twigs and frantic footsteps. But it was different than it had been before. They covered their mouth and nose with their hand, forcing their breath still as they strained to listen. Rapid footfall. Barking and whining. Sniffing. It only meant one thing. Dogs. Trained dogs. They would be physically impossible to outrun, and the only way they would be able to throw them off their scent would be to... Their eyes darted around frantically from where they'd been laying prone, trying to find something, anything that would conceal their scent. Something strong, something pungent. Dung, carcasses, strong-smelling plants, or... Water. Their gaze drifted to the field of reeds, several patches over the shrubbery where they were hiding. Where there were reeds, there was water which meant the marshlands were just a crawling distance away. Their eyes flicked back to the direction they had heard the dogs approach. They could see the shrubs rustling a yard away, occasionally catching sight of the odd ear and tail. From their widespread distribution and intensity of their sniffing, they could tell they had not found them yet, but they were getting dangerously close. They prayed that the mud and leaves would buy them some time, but they knew that the water was their best bet. Slowly, Carefully, they dragged themselves across the dirt, keeping themselves as low to the ground as possible, fearful of raising themselves higher than what the underbrush would be able to cover. They shifted away dry leaves and twigs, anything that would snap or crunch, carefully clearing themselves a path to the reeds. They glanced back to the lights, moving frantically and pointing every which way and closing in, following closely behind the dogs. They didn't have much time left. They choked back their tears and their voice. It was too much. This was all too much. But freedom was within sight, within reach. They could feel the ground giving way to soft, wet mud. The reeds, they were tall enough to conceal them completely, and as soon as they hit water, they would be home free. The dogs would lose their scent, and unless their pursuers were willing to swim with full equipment on, they could put some real distance between them, and then everything would be okay. Everything would be... It was the most intense pain they'd ever felt in their entire life. Sharp teeth easily punching through their jeans and tearing into their flesh. They hadn't seen the dog coming. They looked back and met the eyes of a bull mastiff, its massive size turning gargantuan from their vantage point. The bull mastiff locked its jaws, fixing its grip on their calf and tore through muscle as it yanked them away from the reeds with ease. It viciously shook their leg, as if trying to tear it clean off their body, ripping through more skin as it pulled them back to dry land. <coughs> and just like that, the other dogs descended upon them, snapping, barking, and sinking their teeth into whatever they could get a hold of. Six dogs, all pulling them in different directions, their barks deafening. They yanked and ripped and tore, stripping away the only layers of protection they had. They got him! One of the soldiers shouted. Move it, boys! Shoot the fucker on sight! As one of the dogs lunged for his stomach, it instead found itself biting into a solid, rectangular object. A leather-bound book with jewels embedded in its front cover and clasps, keeping its pages sealed shut. The dog shook the book violently, knocking loose several of the decorative jewels on its cover. The precious gems were thrown in all directions, swallowed by the darkness of night and forest litter. It eventually realized that the book was not the target it was after, and let go, flinging it into the mud and immediately lunging at the figure once more. They were completely immobilized, pinned down and surrounded. All they could do was shield their face, their neck, all their vital organs as best as they could, sacrificing their limbs as the dogs sank their teeth into their forearm. They twisted and turned, kicked and swung, but it was no use. They wouldn't listen. They weren't going to let go and there were too many of them to be able to hope to take on. As though to add insult to injury, the army of men had arrived in the area, blocking off any possible escape route. Through the frenzy of fur, fangs, and upswept leaves, the men could only see glimpses of the pitiful form writhing underneath. Ugh, can't get a good shot at them! Get those damn dogs out of the way! No. The commander interrupted gruffly. Let him finish the job. 
Out in the wilderness, it was easier to get away with a gruesome murder when it could be passed off as an animal attack. But a bullet wound? That indicated human involvement. Murderous intent. Death by mauling was not the prettiest way to go, but it saved them a cleanup. And at the end of the day, it was just business. Sir, I've located the artifact! Shouted one of the soldiers as they extracted the leather-bound book from the bog. Mission accomplished, lads! The commander nodded approvingly. Let's get the hell out of here! He glanced back to the dogs, packed tightly together, growling and snarling as the figure struggled less and less. Handlers stay back with the mutts. Make sure they finish the job and confirm the kill. No loose ends. Yes, sir! The majority of the group dispersed, retreating back to the tree line in single file, ready to turn in after a hard night's work. But their night was far from over. A burst of light filled the area, for a moment turning the darkness of night into the light of day, blinding enough to be mistaken for a missile strike. <sighs> what the fuck? Came the distant shouts of the men that had stayed behind, joined by the chorus of their yelping dogs. The commander and his troops stopped in their tracks, turning back to the direction they had come. The dogs ran past them with their tails between their legs. Their flashlights flickered, then died. Darkness shrouded them once more. The distant voices of the handlers came yet again. What the fuck is that? Shoot it! Ah! Complete silence. What the fuck is going on there? growled the commander, bringing his automated weapon around in shooting position. Guns ready! Shoot anything that moves! In the pitch black, the shadows played tricks on you. Was it truly a person standing ahead of you, or an oddly shaped tree? What movement was caused by the wind and a creature stalking you? A flutter of fabric to their left. Open fire! Gunfire illuminated the claustrophobic space between the trees. They caught glimpses of a shadow moving deftly between them, encircling them. Something's there! Ah! The shadow lunged from the undergrowth, enveloping one of the men and carrying them into the thicket in one fell swoop. Pin it down! More gunfire towards the direction it had disappeared. Ah! Another man taken, and another, until only a handful of them remain, disoriented, terrified, and running terribly low on ammo. Oh, shit! Find that fucking thing! The commander barked, startling his terrified men. There! One exclaimed with a shaky voice, training his gun to the shrubs ahead. It was nearly impossible to distinguish in the murky darkness, but there nonetheless. Unconscious, perhaps deceased, bodies lay strewn on the ground, their dark clothes blending them into the pitch black. And there, obscured among the bushes, was the unknown being. Enshrouded by a cloak and immense in size, even while hunched over on the ground. Its long, almost spindly hands fiddled with the backpack that had once belonged to one of them. With terrifying strength, the creature tore the bag in half, spilling all of its contents as the being rooted through. <sighs> what is it doing? One of the men whispered. It's. it's looking for something? Another answered. The commander's eyes widened in realization. It's after the artifact! Its head snapped sharply in their direction, giving the men their first good glimpse at its face. But all they could see were its eyes, an eerie, pitch-white void that emitted a light of its own. The men trained their guns at the being, tracking its movements as it rose to its full height. Its movements were too fluid, so seamless that it was uncanny, otherworldly, or perhaps... It was just the shadows playing tricks on them. FIRE! A storm of bullets rained on the creature and bounced off its body as harmlessly as raindrops pattering on a window pane. Even as it hit its face, its eyes, there was not one nick, not a single drop of blood drawn. What is that thing? Our guns are doing jack shit! The creature took a step forward, eyes fixated on them and only them as it lowered its stance. Some of the men ceased fire and fled. Others, like the commander, held their ground, even as the being charged at impossible speeds, closing the distance in a blink of an eye. 
They were sent flying with a force that knocked the wind out of their lungs. Some gored, some knocked unconscious instantly. Their bodies fell in a heap on the ground, others colliding with trees and rocks. Through their blurry, fading vision, they saw the creature rooting through their belongings once more, tearing through military-grade locks and fabric until it finally found what it was looking for. And with a sweep of its cloak, it turned and bolted from view, melting away into the darkness.